There's no gift too small for Jesus to use. Faced with an enormous crowd and a huge need, Jesus was about to step into that need. He was going to miraculously handle the situation using the small gift from the little boy. And God takes small things and uses them in big ways, okay? So consider Moses, a staff in his hand. God said, throw it down, give it to me. And then God used that staff and Moses to uh, lead the people out of slavery. He, uh, he uses that staff and he uses Moses to set them free, and he does amazing things. He uses that staff to part the Red Sea. God takes our little and turns it into his much. A guy by the name of Gideon in the Old Testament, he had a, an army of about 15,000 people. And God said, nope, got too much. Cut it down to about three, 300. Now go and face the enemy. And God took his little and did incredible things with it. Okay? God uses our little and turns it into his abundance. Some oil and some flour, if you know your Bible. Okay, a couple of coins and an offering from a widow, a mustard seed, two or three just gathered in the name of Jesus, a simple prayer of faith, a spiritual gift that's burning in your heart. There's no gift too small for Jesus to use. God uses small things. Paul reminds us here in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in the world's eyes or powerful or wealthy when God called you. Instead, God chose, the, the, God chose things the world considers foolish, and he d- chooses things that are powerless. God chooses things despised by the world, things counted as nothing at all, and he uses them. And as a result, no one could ever boast. Why? Because only God could accomplish it, and only he gets the glory, okay? So that means that there's hope for all of us. That means that God can take my little, God can take your little, and if you're wondering what in the world is my little, hey, I want to tell you, get on the growth track, and you'll be blown away by what God reveals to you. He wants to connect you to something he's deposited in you, a gift, a passion, to his much. This means that he can use all of us. It means that there's no hiding place for any of us. We no longer have an excuse for not giving our life, our gifts, our talents, or whatever to him. We can't hide behind an excuse of saying, well, you don't know my background. You don't know my situation. Well, I'm a nobody. I don't have anything that anybody would need. That's not true. That's absolutely not true. God will blow away your small. I want to tell you what, when you understand this, your small will just get blown away by what God chooses to make much out of it. It's it's, it's unbelievable. It's so encouraging. Whenever we give it to him, though, that's the key. We've got to give it to him. So let's go on. Verse 10, Jesus said, have the people sit down. There is plenty of grass in that place. And they sat sat down, about 5,000 men were there. And Jesus then took the loaves and gave thanks and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. And he did the same thing with a fish. And I want you to notice, Jesus gave thanks over what was insufficient. He gave thanks over what was not nearly enough. Jesus, the only thing that Jesus was given was uh, this little boy's lunch, biscuits and sardines, okay? And he says, Father, I want to thank you for biscuits and, for, and sardines. Now, what I need is a lot more than what I'm giving thanks over, but I, I'm giving thanks over what I have because I know what I, you know what I need, and I have to believe that you're going to fill the gap from what I have to what I need. So rather than complain about what I don't have, I'm simply going to give thanks to you for what you gave me. And the Bible says that after he gave thanks, he passed it out and everybody was fed. 